Scott Mahaffey from the Farnsworth House. I'm here with Dirk Lohan, and uh, today is what, the 27th of June? I think so, June 27th, okay, 2021. 29th. 29th, good grief, this month is flying. June 29th, 2021. So, uh, Dirk, a few questions for you um, to get started and uh, thinking about uh, your time at the Farnsworth House and Michelangelo will ask you some questions as well. Um, you've said in previous interviews that you grew up with some of the 1951 Hedrick Blessing photos um, of the Farnsworth House pinned up in your bedroom along with some other photos that your grandfather sent you. And so tell us a little bit about your first trip to see the Farnsworth House when you arrived in Chicago. You were a student at IIT. Yes, I was a student at IIT in 1957. And, um, but before I tell you that story, um, you're right. I was exposed to Mises' work as soon as it was completed because he sent to my mother, who is his daughter, uh, photographs of his work in America. And the Farnsworth House, Crown Hall, and uh, 860, 880, they were all done more or less at the same time. And these pictures appeared in my family, and my mother allowed me to pin them into my bedroom. <laughs> so I grew up with these images, uh, particularly, of course, of the Farnsworth House, which was intriguing when you think we lived at the time in Bavaria, where everything is a pitched roof structure in masonry and heavy cut out windows, etc. In other words, the antithesis of what I <laughs> lived in at the time. This house is, yeah, yeah. is airy and it seems to be floating in, uh, uh, in air. So uh, I was very impressed and I decided ultimately to become an architect. And I enrolled um, uh, at IIT uh, as my beginning. And stop. one of my uh, urgent desires in, in, in the fall of 1957, after just having had a few weeks at IIT, I said, I got to go see the Farnsworth House and uh, invited one or two friends to go with me. And we drove out here. We were all in our late teens. And um, uh, we found the house. We were on River Road. Um, and the trees were already uh, uh, the, uh, uh, they had lost their, their leaves and you could see into the property quite well. And the house in white, of course, was very visible. And uh, we looked through the fence at the house and as we were looking and walking a little bit along the fence, we noticed in the house there was a person getting up from a chair, going to another table, and um, picking up something, and then we saw that it was Edith Farnsworth raising um, um, binoculars, bin binoculars yeah, yeah, yeah. to look at us. <laughs> and she looked at us uh, for a long time and followed us as we were walking along the fence. We were on public property, but we didn't have the guts to enter the house and say hello to her and ask her if we could come and see the house. Uh, because the binoculars were sort of like a gun being pointed at you. <laughs> <laughs> you <know? laughs> so yeah. we, we spent maybe half an hour uh, walking along the fence and looking at the house without ever getting close to it. So this was my very first visit. I did not meet uh, Edith Fransworth, of course, at all at that time. And I never actually really did. Because sometime uh, in the early 60s, uh, a few years later, she put the house on the market and decided to move to Italy. And the house was on the market for several years, two or three years. And I was aware of it. I thought, of, oh my God, I wish I had the money, I would buy it. And I tried to persuade Mies, uh, my grandfather, to, to uh, purchase it, and he wouldn't touch it. <laughs> so. Uh, we, 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 my mother and I, we agreed it would be great for him to have this house, be out here, sit on the terrace, maybe with a nice dog that his hand would yeah. uh, you know, touch. And 
Um, a martini, maybe, or two. He had the martini <laughs> or two, yes, and, but he wouldn't touch it. So it didn't happen. So, and in the same time, we were commissioned, me, meaning the office, Mises Architectural Office, was commissioned by Mr. Palombo, Peter Palombo, uh, to design a headquarters building for Lloyds Bank in, on some property that he owned in the city of London on Mansion House Square in that district. And uh, we, we had done some preliminary work and Peter Palumbo decided to come and visit us in Chicago. And uh, he arrived and uh, saw Mies and I, uh, because he had never been in Chicago, I took him on a trip of the city with in Mies' car, which was a large, um, Lincoln convertible, black and white. And um, we drove around and during our ride, he asked me, what would me say if I asked him, I is Peter in this case, uh, to design a house for me in Scotland, on an island in Scotland that I have some property at. And I said, well, you know, uh, at Mises' age, he was, 30, uh, 80 or 81 years old. I said that may not be the highest priority in his life at this point, but you can always ask him. But the best <laughs> private home, vacation home that he ever designed, a famous one, is the Farnsworth House. And it happens to be for sale. And he said, yes, I heard about it, that house. Where is it located? I said, well, it's about an hour from here. And uh, he said, well, we should go there. And so we turned around and we drove out to Aurora. And in Aurora, we needed to have a little something to eat. And we stopped at one of the street side fast food restaurants, which was, this is 1965, let's say. I don't know exactly which year it was. Um, where you pulled up in the parking lot, rolled down your window, and a waitress came and hung a tablet on your, your door uh, and the food was served that way and you sat in the car and ate the, whatever you had ordered, the hamburger or whatever. And Peter was fascinated with that, <laughs> of uh, how, what an interesting idea and he had never seen anything like this and he liked being out here. And I drove him over here and at that time the house was on the market and you could get into the property and walk up to the house. I do not recall whether we entered the house mm. because it was a spontaneous visit. Yeah. It wasn't arranged as a real estate review or right, you right. Know, a viewing of a house. So we, but we, because it's all glass, you could see enough what the house is like. Peter fell in love with it and uh, uh, went back to England eventually and um, uh, approached Edith Farnsworth in Italy. Mm. Eventually visited her there, there mm. and uh, ended up buying the house. Mm -hmm. And that was about 68 at that point maybe? I would say 68 70? or 67, yes, somewhere yeah, there. Okay. I don't know the yes. year offhand. And then he, he actually bought it over time. Do you know much about that? We're going to talk to Lord Palumbo too, but um, he didn't purchase it all at once. He uh, finally closed on the property in July of 71, and then you first started renovating right around then. Well, he asked me after uh, he had decided to buy it and had uh, at least he had control or access to it. If I, because I lived here and I was here, if I would uh, look after the house and make the necessary repairs or uh, suggest improvements and also purchase for him some furniture or, or have it made, uh, which I then did. I designed a number of things, a table, desk, a boot box, yes. which was sort of my invention as a uh, it's, it's something that I have seen in England, mm. where people in the country have a, a sort of a, a box at the entry where you take your boots off yeah. and, and hide them in the box. That's a great idea. So they don't stand around with their mud. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did here yeah. uh, behind the desk. 
And I designed the bed that uh, there was no, yes. no custom no. bed. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the features of the house has always been uh, a rather uh, the lack of book shelving. There's no book shelves here. Yes. Uh, there it was uh, the, the bed, I mean a normal bed, there's no, no place where you can put your linen or your pajama or right. whatever, slippers. Right. So I designed a bed that had six drawers mm -hmm. underneath it where you could store something. Fantastic. And uh, the same with the desk that has these side tablets for books. Yes. And some. Uh, and those are in the lobby at the Langham Hotel, is that right? The, that that, uh, that Copies. desk is there now and mm -hmm. it's available through, through my furniture design yes. business. Yeah. And then the rest of the furniture, it seems, came from Knoll? Yes. And how did you go about, I mean, Mies or the office did several different furniture studies, but never, thing, never anything was definitive. How did you and Lord Palumba determine which pieces to select from Knoll and where they would be placed? I don't know specific discussions about it, except that I would probably have made a, a drawing and a layout plan and suggest this should go here, this should go here, and Peter would review it and may, may, may make some suggestions. Yes. Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd like such and such a different, little different or more. I forget what it was, yes. but that's how it was done. Yeah. But one of the things that, that I have to report here for the record is I, uh, when I was here once in, in the winter alone, Yes. Peter was not in, in America at the time. I came to the house and um, I made a fire in the fireplace. And the fireplace was just the flat travertine and you put the logs on the stone and you lit them. And that worked fine. The, the, the flames were, and the smoke went up the flue, mm -hmm. which is not very long because it's right. from here to the roof is not very long, but right. flues should be a little longer sure, to sure. have the warm air rise. But, yes. uh, but I noticed that as soon as somebody came in the door, and if it's a little windy outside, the wind that blew in right along the floor would come over to the fireplace and swirl up the glowing ashes. Mm, mm, mm. Right, right. Like a, in a fan. And I said, oh my God, that's dangerous. That's how you burn the whole house down. <laughs> and that can't be like that. My dear grandfather didn't know how to do a proper fireplace. <laughs> Not the hearth so, anyway. <laughs> so I decided to put a, I think it's a four inch piece of solid travertine right. carved out with a, a dish. Yes. And, and uh, arranged it the way it is now and it's yes. ever always been like this. Yes. And that I know stopped the flow of the cold air along the floor mm -hmm. flowing through the fire. Yes. So that change was made very soon after That's he took very possession. Soon, yes. So like 71 maybe, yes. the winter of 71. Yes. And in those years we, we mean my office help and uh, uh, we, we uh, assessed what should be done. Yes. There were water Proofing issues. There were mm -hmm. window cracks. There, were, there was rust. Yes. All of that. Yeah. And uh, Peter was always fabulous. He did what was needed, mm -hmm. and he uh, several times he flew his private uh, painter from England mm -hmm. to he, over here, and he <laughs> stayed a couple of weeks, and he repainted the house and touched up all the rusty spots. Mm. Uh, it was really always looking superb yes. when he had the house. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, we have the Edith Farnsworth furniture behind us now, replicas. When um, she retired to Italy, she left several of her furniture pieces in the house. Do you know what became of them? No, I never did. She must have moved them out. Well, they're in the early photos after Lord Palumbo took possession, so maybe he did something with them or gave them uh, it's away funny. or I, something. I don't know. Yeah. My suspicion is that he asked her, where would you like me to have them delivered mm. or something? Mm. Sure, sure. But I, I had nothing to do with that that I can recall. Yeah. yeah. 
going back to being a student at IIT, other than your knowing the Farnsworth House through those Hedrick Blessing photos, was the Farnsworth House taught as part of any course at IIT? No, uh, because my first year was really a freshman year, yes. which was concentrating on drafting and making proper straight lines and, you know, that sort of thing, right. the craft of right. drafting. Right. Yes. And um, uh, and also working with ink mm. on Strathmore. Yes. Um, so we did not really uh, have any lectures about the Farnsworth House, but the house was very famous among the students and the faculty there, and there were discussions about this okay. house and you know what we thought. Yes. And it was highly admired right. by all of us. Yeah, and did Mies ever talk about it at that time, or was it still sort of well, irritating? Over, over, <laughs> the, uh, over the years, uh, I asked him a, a few questions that he always was welcome to, or was, was uh, eager to answer correctly. Okay. Um, but I didn't ask him touchy questions, yeah. like <laughs> what was the reason for the fight or uh, with Edith Farnsworth. Yeah. That was already written up in the books, and I had <laughs> read that stuff. <laughs> right, right. And at the, at the same time, Franz Schulze was doing research for his biography on Mies yes. in the late 60s. And I was friendly with him, and I was the person in the office that gave him and fed him information and documents mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, when he needed something. Yes. So. Um, Franz and I became good friends uh, for the rest of our lives. He died a few years ago. And um, um, so I became very familiar. And I, I sort of learned a lot about the history of Mises' life and his coming to America and his early work here. Uh, but I swore to myself I would not become a Mises historian. Yeah. Uh, despite my best efforts not to be one, I am sort of one now, yes. because I'm one of the very few people that knew him during his lifetime. Yes, yes. The Lohan tapes that were just published as yes. a book, there were other tapes that were lost. Did you ever talk with Mies on those tapes about the Farnsworth House that you recall? No, I don't recall exactly what was missing there, because yeah. it was done in 68 or 69, I'm sorry. Right 69, before he died. Just before he died. Yeah. And I had, uh, I had a jour fix once a week with him in his apartment and yes. his cook would make dinner the way I liked them. <laughs> she was Hungarian and I loved her goulash. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> and um, I, learned so much about him and his stories about Berlin and coming yes. and the early days in America and so on. And I said, I need to write this down. I need to memorize this. And, but at 11 p.m. when I came home to my young family with two kids, they were already asleep. Mm. I didn't have the energy to sit down for another hour and write right. this down. <laughs> so I said brilliantly, I'm going to ask him if he uh, would agree for me to take some rec tape recorder. Yeah. And I bought a good quality tape recorder and said, we just put it on the table, we'll let it run, we talk as if nothing is there and so on. Right. And I did that and we, we did that and he agreed and it was that way. But then I thought, I need to organize this a little bit and I began to ask him questions that were chronologically uh, mm -hmm. organized from yeah. his early period, later through, and so on. And that's how I progressed Makes and sense. never got to the end, of course, because yeah. he died before I could. Yeah. But th these tapes, I gave them to the, museum, to the Museum of Modern Art, and only last year they came and said, uh, we want to be a cave. We published them in a book form. Uh, so they came out, a uh, publisher in Berlin, actually, in English and in German. Good. Both. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. In the, at this point, you've pretty much given everything that pertains to the Farnsworth House 
to MoMA. Yes. That's really yes. where the collection is. Yes. And same with Getch. The archives, the few things. Well, they, they inherited what I left behind. Yes. And some of the work we had done in the office as Lohan Associates was left when I left there. Yes. So they have that. Yeah. yeah. And now that that's at MoMA, um, do you uh, recall anything uh, specific to the archives pertaining to Farnsworth that was a surprise? I assume at some point you read through those files or might have discovered you know, you, something you, interesting. You will find it uh, amazing, but I didn't always read everything. Okay, sure. I sort of looked at what it was and then yeah. I decided, should I read this or should I really look at it carefully or just yeah. pass it on. Yeah. I also, uh, I separated primarily his architectural works and projects and drawings yes. from his personal correspondence and the, the letters that he received and he wrote. And those went to the Library of Congress mm. because MoMA wouldn't take such things. I see. Or, or vice versa, the yes. Library of Congress wouldn't take architectural drawings. Right. So that's basically what happened. But your your uh, family does still have the intellectual property rights to yes. Mises archives. Yes. So if somebody wants to develop a project or a product using Mises designs, they have to get your permission. Is that right? That's or correct. Okay. Well, that's of interest. I think you know. Certainly. Well, there was a, there was a case a few years ago where uh, some people in California, a vineyard, yes. wanted to build the 50 by 50 house. Yes. And they started doing it. <laughs> and we learned about it. I learned about it. Right. And I said, now wait a minute. Did you have permission to do this? And so I got in touch with them. I met them and yes. they showed me what they mean. And I, we decided that that was at least respectfully done. Uh, and is it finished now? No. Okay. Because they ran out of money. Okay. <laughs> and then it's they had the fires there. Oh, you know, yes. And all of this. So oh, it's not gosh. finished, finished. But, but uh, it's a vineyard tasting room. Is that the plan? It will yes. become, yeah. And, and sales room, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that will happen. I'm sure it will be finished. Yeah. It's very, very small, 50 by 50. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's still fascinating because it was, the concept was developed really the same time the Farnsworth House was yeah. developed. Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of drawings, if you look at Mies in America, it's interesting to see because Farnsworth House started and stopped and started and stopped and then really started in earnest in 1949. Of course, Mies developed many projects in the ensuing years. And so you look at these conceptual designs and a lot of them look very much like the Farnsworth House. Of course, the Indiana University School of Architecture being one of them. And I wonder if you could comment on that project, what you know of it. Yeah. It's fascinating that a Mies design is being realized 70 years after his, or 50 years after his death. 70. Oh, 50 after years his after death. his death. Yeah, yeah, 70 after it was designed, yeah, yeah. which is fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. Yes, it really is. Uh, and it does look, Look very modern. I mean, it looks very contemporary next to other recent architecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There has definitely been a Miesian revival, and I think since the Farnsworth House has opened to the public in 2003, probably two generations of architects at least have come through on public tours or with university tours. Yes. So it continues to influence yeah. uh, our young architects as it did, of course, for those GIs who were studying at IIT after the war. Yes. Yeah. So it's interesting to see that there are Farnsworth House look-alikes all over the world. Yes. Which is kind of a compliment, I think. Was Mies uh, proud of the Farnsworth House despite all oh, the oh, controversies? No doubt about it. Okay. I mean, this was a concept of doing a house in nature, mm -hmm. in his head. Mm -hmm. Uh, early on, I don't know when, but he had a perhaps somewhat unique ability to to dream up and think through designs, concepts, mm -hmm. long before he even had a client. Mm -hmm. He often, like mm -hmm. Crown Hall, I, I, I'm absolutely sure he was thinking about something like that. Yes. Until the opportunity came, right. you know. Yeah. These, uh, yeah. That's, that's how he worked and that's how he thought. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's uh, good that despite uh, the bad feelings with architect and client at the end, that it was still a project that he took pride in, you know, in yes. the end. So that's, yes. uh, that's a good legacy. Um, and of course, as you mentioned, um, Crown Hall, uh, if, if you think about Farnsworth House as a design-build project, because of course, Mies really couldn't find a contractor who would take the project on, and so his office served as the general contractor. But it also gave him the freedom to sort of work out the details. And when you look at a lot of the details for the windows, uh, for example, you see this, a lot of the similar details at Crown Hall. So this was a real turning point for his American career. And I wonder if Edith knew that, if she felt that she was really uh, Mises' patron more than a client and may have had a chip on her shoulder about it. I, I've often asked myself the, the question as well, and I have absolutely no sense of exactly what she felt about all this. Sure. I think that um, uh, the book that's been written, what's it called? Alex Beam, Broken yeah, Glass. Broken Glass yeah. is perhaps correct, but perhaps not totally correct about the way it all developed. We weren't there, were we? We weren't there, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, it is sad that uh, it got to the point where there was a lawsuit and um, I, I know that the, the budget for the house that was discussed over cocktails. Yeah. And maybe the number, uh, I think Mies was saying to me once that he wrote a number on a cocktail napkin and that was it, <laughs> you know. And of course, there was no contract, written contract. That's right. With a budget. Yes. So, and it was after the war, but, materials were but scarce. But also, I mean, when you think about it, the fact that the house cost $75,000 yeah. about, that seems so little to, to <laughs> us today. <laughs> today, by today's yes. dollars, right. Yes. Well, I think in 1971, Lord Palumbo paid something like, you know, 100 and... 200. Yeah, 200,000 maybe for 62 acres on this house. Yeah. So it's just amazing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Prices have certainly increased. Yeah, and I have, I have repeatedly uh, uh, felt bad and stupid that I didn't accept his... He offered me the house when he was selling it before oh, anybody else. In the he 90s. He said, you should be the first one that I'll offer this house to buy. Yeah. Yeah. And I had just bought a farm in Michigan, <laughs> 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 and I couldn't afford another house. Right. So I turned it down. Yeah. And but I could have been the one that uh, was fixing things. So. Oh well, you <laughs> got off pretty easy then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go back to that. So I mean, you talked about uh, Lord Palumbo. You of course knew him because you were working on Mansion House Square with your grandfather. And when Peter would come to Chicago, you know, you could drive him around and then he trusted you. And so you were managing the project for him. And uh, certainly, you know, in the early years, you made a list of what needed to be done to get the house, you know, restored and help furnished. But you were also managing the site, the property development. Yes, to some degree, yeah. So putting up a fence and landscaping yeah, yeah. and... Um, yeah. And you were corresponding back and forth. Yes. In addition to that, he asked me to buy china, glassware, silverware. So everything in the house that, that you needed to stay here, yeah. I acquired because there was nothing. <laughs> Zero to right. begin with. <laughs> right, right. And in those early years, um, would he come by himself or would he bring the children? Well, I or? think if I remember this correctly, but I mean, that is something really that he should answer. Yes. But uh, I think at that time he had broken up with his first wife yes. and he was more or less alone. Mm -hmm. And he came several times by himself. And would relax and yeah, yeah. Uh, go to antique stores, apparently, because yeah, he bought quite yeah. a lot of... Uh, I went to an art gallery. He became yes. friends with Richard Gray. Yes. And um, then he, as you know, established, bought, or brought, uh, bought and brought all the pieces of art that were in yes. the garden. Yes. That was fascinating because they were very good pieces. Yes. Important pieces. Yes. 
and um, I wish we could uh, duplicate that again. Yes, wouldn't that be nice? It's your job. No? Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> you know, maybe not permanent collection, but you know, rotating collections of pieces. Yeah. Um, and Landing Roper, did you ever meet Landing yes. Roper? You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so and he passed away in the late 80s, maybe, 87? Yeah, or so. uh, I, uh, I didn't know him very well, but I met him a couple of times, I'm sure. Yeah, I know, we walked around. And he talked about where he thinks something should be planted and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there was a fellow named Cork. We were talking about that. Yeah, I local. can't recall his name anymore, yeah. but a local guy. Yes. That, that's what you always need when you have sure. a design uh, planner or architect from, from over another country. You need a local representative that can implement that. Yes, stuff. yes. So really throughout the 80s, uh, 90s, Lord Palumbo was buying sculpture, creating the sculpture walk, occasionally opening the property for the Art Institute or a charity tour. And then by uh, the, what, mid-90s, I think he had conceived of this idea of opening Kentuck Knob and the Farnsworth House and maybe Maison Joule as a for-profit house museum business. Yeah, that gradually developed in his mind to make it into a museum, let's say, yes, and open to the public. Because, frankly, when he owned it alone and lived here occasionally, the, the people would come always and ask, can we see the house? And right, right. It was an attraction. Yes. And uh, so that is not surprising that it went that way. Yeah. But he also had a very active social life. I mean, I know that uh, out here, Yes. Several important people came to visit, such as the Pritzkers. Yes. Zaha Hadid was yes. here. Uh, and usually I was also invited. Yes. So I've seen some of that. Yeah, Peter Carter and some of the early Miesian yeah, Peter Carter were was visitors. a good uh, friend. Um, I, in fact, it's interesting, Peter Carter died about seven or eight years ago, maybe. And I was visiting London, and as I was over there, I learned that Peter died. Mm. So I stayed another day and participated in his... Oh, uh, it was fate. ...funeral, yeah. Yeah. And Peter was there. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, it just happened that way. It was meant to be. Um, but it is very interesting that Peter had this concept that the Farnsworth House was a museum and should be staged, uh, but there would be a need for other attractions here to keep people coming back. And uh, he was going to hire Zaha Hadid to develop a new visitor center. And I know that he had a, a hangar at the Aurora That's Airport. That's a missed opportunity. Yes, it certainly <laughs> is. Uh, and then, of course, he had a hangar at the Aurora Airport he was renting, and he was buying collections of antique cars yeah. Yeah. and Native American collections and yeah. so forth. So he had a grand vision, I think, for Farnsworth, you know, that there would be more than Mies, you know, yeah. more yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I, I think I've heard that he was working with Frank Gehry on something at Kentuck Knob. Obviously that didn't happen either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was very much an ambitious, you know, vision. And then I think for whatever reason, he backed off of that concept and then tried to sell the property to the state of Illinois. Well, I think he came gradually uh, to the conclusion that this isn't a house for him and his family to, yes. to, to be in, because it's really no more than one bed house, yes. you know. And um, uh, also, at the, in the 90s, there was a major flood of the house. Yes. There was water here this high. Sure, even higher, 96, right? Yeah. Almost six feet of water in the house. And uh, I afterwards inspected the house. I made a list of what needs to be done. And we estimated what it would have to cost. And it was enormous cost, several hundred thousand dollars yes. to, to, to restore it again. And uh, I, at that time, he had married uh, Hyatt, his uh, new wife. I think she was probably not unwisely thinking that money 
that you may have to spend several times more. Though, yes. Because it could happen again and again. And somehow they decided to sell the house rather than, right. than do all these and improvements. He, to his credit, he was very patient with the state of Illinois. It took several years of back and forth yeah. until finally yeah. Lisa Madigan said, you know, with the state's financial situation, we're never going to be able to justify purchasing this. Yeah. So then, of course, he starts removing the sculptures, taking most of them to conduct knob, and talking to Sotheby's about selling the house as a work of art rather than yeah. a work of architecture. And, and, you know, when you ask yourself, well, why did, why was Frank Lloyd Wright in Pennsylvania acceptable and this was not? And frankly, from my point of view, maybe my interpretation of it is, this sits in a floodplain which is the number one problem of this house. That's true. And the Kentuck knob, knob means hill, right? Yes, yes. It sits on top of the hill. <laughs> That's true. And there is absolutely no way water will ever come well, up Well, that is true. It's much safe. <laughs> so much it was a wonderful, it's a wonderful house. Yes. And na wonderful nature. And Kentuck knob, of course, being so close to falling water, yes, they had yes. a market. And sure. This is really very rural. Yeah. You know, yeah. an hour or an hour and a half from Chicago, so very remote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there were reasons. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, after the National Trust acquired it, you were involved with rededicating it, reopening to the public in 2004, I think? Yeah, to some degree. A ribbon, de ribbon cutting, I know, there was a ceremony. Um, really? And, then and I was there? I think so, okay. yes, I have pictures to prove it. <laughs> I've done a lot of ribbon cuttings. So yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and then we started doing tours, of course. So it's been yeah. almost 20 years that it's been open to the public, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then, of course, recently we've really sort of expanded our programming focus and uh, putting Mies in context with other modernist architects and artists, of course, modern art movements being very important, especially modern painters to Mies. Um, so now, of course, you're a member, the founding member of the Farnsworth House Stewardship Council. So I wonder if you could talk about that, about our expanding vision and what it means for future stewards of the Farnsworth House. Well, um, number one, I've always felt a, a certain responsibility to making sure this house is protected and uh, preserved. Uh, I wish I could just give the dollar amount necessary to do it all in one, one move. But um, the, uh, uh, the Stewardship Council, uh, a number of people from Chicago that have a, have a feeling for this kind of architecture of the mid-century, and we're discussing with you as executive director of the, is that your official title? It is, yeah. yeah of the Farnsworth House, um, what to do, how to market it, how to raise the money, and so on. And we're having very wide-ranging discussions about the branding of this place, uh, the use of not only the house and its um, repairs and improvements, but also the property. And we're discussing landscape plans and the use of establishing, or the, establishing a more park-like feeling on the property where people enjoy walking, mm -hmm. taking walks, uh, maybe uh, can stop and uh, picnic or eat something. I mean, yes. it's, uh, with a new different feeling for, for this unique property. The property, in fact, is a very important aspect of this house now in yes. my opinion, because yes. it's large. Yes. It protects it completely yes. from other properties and other houses. And, you know, uh, it's the, uh, people always j jokingly say you can't live in the glass house in, a, in the suburbs because you, the right. neighbors look, look into your house at all right. times. This, this is not in the suburbs. This is in the country. Yes. And the property is large enough that the views are completely protected. Yes. Nobody can look in here, really. No, no. Uh, unless they're, they're sneaking through the woods. Right. Yeah. Um, right. So um, it's a very special place that deserves to be protected. Yes. And uh, 
be around as a uh, symbol and icon of uh, the 20th century. And Mies was certainly um, the kind of thoughtful architect who strived all his life to express the essence of that century. And I think this house is probably the one piece that tells it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well put. Well, we have our water here. I just wondered if there's anything that you haven't talked about that... Well, should we leave something for Mr. Well, certainly Michelangelo <laughs> will ask you questions. Is there anything about thinking back about Farnsworth House, any th secrets, anything that, uh, that or, or even something that you did that you should have received more credit for or... Oh, I don't, I'm look, not looking for credit on, on this house, but I'll tell you another funny story. When I first sort of took over responsibility for things, there was some air conditioning or ventilation, I forget exactly what it was, in that mechanical space in yes. the core here. And it's very small, as you know, <laughs> very tight. Yes. Super tight. And I called uh, a local plumbing company or whatever, a ventilation guy, I don't remember the specific trade, and they sent a workman out, and he was a big, burly guy with a big belly. Oh, no. <laughs> and he couldn't even get in the door <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> so from then on, I had to specify the size of the workman that they should send, <laughs> and not just anybody. That's right. <laughs> do you have a teenager? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, well. That's great. There are lots of stories, those yeah. of memories around this house, that's for sure.